Well, good morning, or good afternoon, soon to be, to Chattanooga's first Eco Expo. There is no more appropriate city to be having such a gathering than Chattanooga, Tennessee. I can say that from long experience. When I got out of Auburn University in 1968, which was a very memorable year, in 1969 I was working as a planner for the Tennessee State Planning Commission. And in that year, Chattanooga was designated as the most polluted city in America. Walter Cronkite told America and as much of the world as was listening at that time, and he had a top-rated news show that Chattanooga was the most polluted city in America. And he was talking about air pollution. And you've all seen the pictures. You've seen the, the, the pictures of the smog, the fog, and how uh, that, that famous picture of the car that just seems to be disappearing into a cloud, that was Chattanooga in 1968 and 1969. We also had a very thriving tuberculosis hospital and a lot of doctors that made a lot of money dealing with respiratory health. Chattanooga has come a long way since then. In 1970 and 71, I worked for Research Triangle Institute of North Carolina doing studies of air pollution and health in Chattanooga under the Environmental Protection Agency through the local health department. Interestingly enough, we were studying the Volunteer Army Ammunition Plant. You know where that is. We now call it Enterprise South. But at that time, the Vietnam War was going full bore and, the, inter and the, the Volunteer Army Ammunition Plant was cranking out TNT, and in the process it was cranking out air pollution and, to a certain extent, water pollution. And let me say this while we're on that subject. Not only was Chattanooga a polluted city in terms of air, but all along the interstate and all along US-41 below Chattanooga were signs that said avoid human contact because, at that time, our water was polluted as well. But studying the health effects of the TNT plant gave the world and gave America the standards for air pollution, which we still depend upon today. The catalytic converter on your car is a product of the studies in Chattanooga. If you don't believe me, Google Chattanooga, C-H-E-S-S, -S, Community Health and Environmental Surveillance System. That was Chattanooga 40 years ago. I could bring you all along the calendar and tell you how we came to be where we are today, but it has been a long and sometimes a tortured process. There was a time in the 70s when we were very proud of the fact that we were in the top 10 of industrial cities, and we're still proud of industry. But Industry that's clean, industry that's environmentally responsible, industry that's sustainable. Every year the story would come out, Chattanooga in the top ten of industrial cities. And then we began to slip down that list. And in the 1970s we went from ninth to twelfth to thirteenth to fifteenth. And someone said to me, what are we going to do to get Chattanooga back up on that list? We were walking across Miller Park. I still remember it very well. And I said, has anyone ever looked at the list? The person I was talking to said, well, he hadn't. And I said, do we know actually what the list is telling us? No. We walked across to the Manufacturers Association, which was located in the block across from the library at that time, the old Civic Forum building. And we asked to see the list. And on the list were 100 cities ranked in terms of employment in manufacturing. And at the top of the list was Flint, Michigan. And then there was Gary, Indiana, and Cary, Illinois, and cities that were just in that time beginning to suffer from the changes in industry and environmental concerns that were beginning to take hold at that time. At the bottom of the list, this was 1 to 100, at the bottom of the list was Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and Las Vegas, Nevada. A reporter asked me sometime after that where I thought Chattanooga should be on the list, and I said somewhere in the middle. And that's where we are today. We're a balanced city. We're a city that is still tied to industry, but it's tied to quality of life. In the 1980s, 
in a time not unlike this, in a time of great economic distress, Chattanooga pulled itself together and as a community decided to set a course to build a different kind of city. It was 1982 and interest rates were high and we were hemorrhaging jobs and it was very much like today in terms of economic distress. But we brought, in that, in that time, we created Chattanooga Venture and Vision 2000 and all of that, and we brought Jim Rouse to town. Well, Jim Rouse was a developer who had made his money in shopping centers, but he also had made a name for himself in resurrecting cities, in particular inner cities. He was famous for building Columbia, Maryland, a new planned city near Washington. And he was famous for bringing back life to Baltimore, which was a very depressed and distressed city at that time with the Baltimore Inner Harbor Development and the National Aquarium that was built there. And Faneuil Hall in Boston and all. And Mr. Rouse came to Chattanooga and talked to a crowd at the Tivoli Theater. And at the end, he took questions and someone asked him, Mr. Rouse, how do we make this city grow? And he said, well, growth is what people frequently ask about. And the answer is very simple. Build your community as the best quality community that it can be for the people who already live here, and growth will take care of itself. And that's what we've been doing since the mid-1980s. We set a goal to become the best mid-sized city in America, and I honestly believe that we're there. Uh, there are a lot of cities that have bragging rights, but I don't think that there's any city that can brag of more transformation than Chattanooga. And I know that from visiting cities all over the country and all over the world and having people come here. There was a time when we took people from Chattanooga to other cities to be inspired. We started with Indianapolis and we did go to Baltimore and we went to Portland and we went to all of those cities that are cities that have a great deal to offer both to people who visit and people who come from out of town. And now, we see people from those cities coming here on a regular basis to be inspired by what's happened in Chattanooga. In recent history, we have, and, and Karen Hunt will be talking more about it this afternoon, we have embarked on making Chattanooga even greener than it has been in the past and making it a more environmentally friendly and sustainable community, and we are committed to that cause. We've come a long way. We are the tra most transformed city in America and I believe that we have yet more work to do and we will accomplish it. She'll be talking to you about the climate action plan that was put together by 14 individuals that I recruited to sit down together and to map out a strategy for how Chattanooga can become more sustainable and move up that list once again of most livable cities. She'll talk to you about the 14 people that were drawn from all walks of life. These weren't just people who believed blindly in environmental sustainability. There were people who had questions, people who had doubts, and that's how you make things happen in a community. You have people who bring different opinions to the table, but they produce more than 40 things that we can do and a consensus on a direction that sets this city on a course of being uh, even more sustainable and more environmentally friendly than it has been in the past. I could say more, I could stand here and talk for an hour, but uh, I think you'd get tired and get up and wander around and look at the exhibits and that's what I plan to do. I just want to congratulate those who made this event possible today, who produced it. I know how difficult it is to gather all of these trade booths together and such. Uh, I look forward to this becoming an annual event and bigger and bigger and drawing more and more people to Chattanooga and its environmentally friendly community. Thank you very much.